Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I welcome you to part two of three in this mini series of how you can animate archived images using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. In today's video, I show you the power of the Puppet Pin tool and how to turn a regular headshot into a transition all in 3D space. If you haven't done so yet, check out part one linked in the description below. Now it's time to dive into After Effects. So the first thing we're gonna do is make our headshot smile. And in order to do that, we need to use the Puppet Pin tool. And in order to do that, I'm gonna click on my headshot here and I'm going to start putting points all around the photo. And the reason I'm putting points all around the photo is that say if I just put points on the mouth, the entire photo would still move and it could look really distorted and weird and we don't want that. So we'll go back here. I'm just gonna start putting points everywhere, all around the photo. All right, so we have our points all around. Now what we need to do is create our points for the mouth. So I'm gonna go in here, we'll change it to full. I'm gonna create a point on one side of the mouth, the center, and the other side of the mouth. All right, and each time you actually put um, a point using your Puppet Pin tool, it creates a keyframe. So we have 35 different Puppet Pin tool keyframes, but don't worry, we're not animating all of them. We're only gonna be animating the ones around the mouth. And those are the last three that we put here. So I'm going to go to about a second and a half. I'm gonna move this pin tool up. I'm gonna move this one up. Maybe move it up, move these up a little bit more. And I'll move up this mouth as well. So now we're starting to see the smile form, which is uh, looking pretty good. And if we wanted to take this a step further, what we could do is actually add some more points on the eyebrows. Because when you smile, sometimes you raise your eyebrows, right? It's not just your, uh, your mouth. And what I'll do with that is I'll go to a second and a half and I will move up the eyebrow slightly. And then with all that being said, what we wanna do from here is actually ease these keyframes that we're animating. So we have those, I'm gonna click F9. And with just a few pins, now we have our smiling headshot, which looks pretty cool. So as cool as our smile is, there's still more work to be done. And what we're gonna do is actually create a transition with this portrait headshot. So stay with me for a second. I'm gonna deselect the headshot. I'm going to duplicate my new background and I will call this paper background. And what I'm gonna do is actually mask out all of this paper behind our headshot. And if you've followed any of my other tutorials, I masked out the actual uh, War General in Photoshop. So um, if you wanna know how to do that, just go to one of my other tutorials, I'll link it, and you can see how to properly mask someone out of a photo in Photoshop, just so you don't have to do it manually in After Effects. It just saves you a little bit of time. So now that we have this masked out, I'm gonna just give it a slight feather, let's say two. I'm going to delete that, I'm going to duplicate, and we will just call this frame. We'll click M and subtract this. Now we have our frame, our headshot, and our paper background. Now the next thing we're gonna do is make these 3D and start our actual parallax movement. So I'm going to highlight these all, make them 3D. I'm gonna to go to layer, new camera, click OK. I just stick with the default settings on that. And what I'm gonna do from here is go to two view so we can see what we're looking at here. And I'm gonna start backing things up into 3D space. So our frame is gonna be the closest thing to us, but I still wanna back it up a little bit. So I'm gonna back that up to 2,500. And then with our headshot, I'm gonna back that up to 5,000. And with our paper background, I will back that up to, let's say 7,500. So these are all backed up evenly. And just so you guys can see what that looks like in 3D space, that's what it looks like. We'll jump back into one view. And now what we need to do is actually scale these back up so they fit proportionally within our frame. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna scale each item up individually. And in order to tell uh, where things are scaled proportionally, I'm using the bounding box around each layer. And as soon as those bounding boxes touch the edges of the frame of our composition, then I know that it's been scaled proportionally. Awesome. Now what we're gonna do is our parallax effect and then we're going to make a transition out of this. Our smile we know goes to about a second and a half. So I'm gonna start our zoom at about a half second. I'm gonna click P for position, set a keyframe and I'm gonna go one second up and then I'm going to 
zoom in here. And right here, you see things are cut off a little bit at the bottom. So uh, in order to compensate for that, what we're gonna do is actually just scale this up a little bit because at the end of the day, it's still behind the frame in 3D space. So we're able, we have that flexibility. Um, so I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna highlight these. I'm gonna click F9 for easy ease. Now what I'm gonna do is click on our last keyframe here, go to our graph editor, drag this handle all the way out so it's gonna start fast and then ramp off slow. It's just so we have a nice smooth movement. We'll drop down our quality here just so things render a little bit faster. And if I want, I could even start this a little bit later. So we got the smile going. And then we have the zoom. But we still need to actually do the transition itself. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our paper background here. And we need to find our anchor point. So we're going to move our anchor point. So you can click Y or the anchor point tool up here. And what I want this to do, I want this to kind of swing open like a door. So I have snapping turned on. That makes it a lot easier when you're moving anchor points is to have snapping on. And I'm just gonna move this over here to the edge. And that way it snaps to the, to the bounding box that we see right there. And then I'm gonna press R for rotation. And you see it could rotate in lots of different ways in 3D space. So you could do towards us, you could do away from us, you could even do up and down. There's a lot of different ways. I'm gonna just animate our Y rotation. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to animate this out like that. We'll do our easy easing again, and we'll just see how this looks. And I need to change up the timing of things. I'm actually going to move this up and then move that out. This is looking good. Now what we want to do is get rid of our uh, general. So. What we're going to do is click on our headshot, click P for position, then we're going to go down. We're going to bring him down out of the shot. We're going to do the same easing before, F9, graph editor, drag this handle across, just like our other ones. And most importantly, we're going to turn motion blur on for all of these layers. So just like our other example with the smile, with this handshake that we have going on here, I had to use the puppet pin tool and I actually needed to put anchors throughout the entire image. The reason for that is because we need to put anchors everywhere so we can control the section that we wanna move. What we're gonna be doing differently with this example is adding lights. So I'm gonna to go to layer, new light, and I'm going to start off by adding a spotlight. I'm gonna be using a, just a slightly warmer light here and so I'm just gonna click okay. The intensity, cone angle, and feather, I'm just gonna leave those settings as B. And then with all the other settings, I'm just gonna leave those as B for now. We could change those later if we want. I'm gonna click okay. And right away, you could see that we have a spotlight here and it's uh, projecting mainly onto our characters, which are in the center of the image, but also onto the background a little bit. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make adjustments to this light. And this light is also in 3D space. So when I go to two view here, you could see where our light is in relation to all of our other objects, our dust particles, our background, and our actual characters. So what I wanna do is start off in the handshake and then widen the light and show who's actually shaking hands and that they're in front of a crowd. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to go down to our transform and light options and we're gonna start setting some keyframes and animating things. I'm gonna add a keyframe for the intensity and then the cone angle and then we're gonna to go to five seconds here and we're gonna set more keyframes. And we're gonna make adjustments to these. I like to leave keyframes on both sides of the actual animation itself. That way, if we wanna reference uh, how it looked originally, we have that option. So I'm gonna to go to our first keyframe here and what I'm gonna do is actually bring this down, bring it in. And I'm adjusting the overall position and point of interest of our light. I'm gonna start off with our intensity being 60 and our angle being like, let's say 25. I'm just gonna back this up a little bit so we can see more. So we're not just gonna change the intensity and cone angle of the light, we're also going to uh, adjust the position and rotation of it as well. So I'm gonna go and boost this intensity up to let's say 90, cone angle, bring down here, and I'm going to bring my light up, 
And you see how it's projecting in our 3D space here in our two view. So I'm just showing you guys what that looks like. And I'm going to animate the X rotation. where you're going to ease everything. So just click F9. So right now it starts in here and it animates out to here. And this is gonna be very intense in your machine, by the way. I have a decent machine and it takes pretty long to render these out. So this looks good, but there's still more work to be done because I wanna see more of the image. I wanna just use this light as an enhancement. I don't want this to be in the main effect. So what we need to do is actually add a second light. So what we're gonna do is go to layer, new, light, and we will change this to an ambient light. We're gonna change the intensity to 15. Adding an ambient light gives overall light to your image. So when I go here and you know bring this up, it's impacting the entire image itself. Now, you'll see when I bring it up, it also makes the intensity of our spotlight a little bit brighter, and that's just because we're adding a second light. So sometimes we actually need to change the intensity of our original spotlight if adding an ambient light makes that spotlight look a little bit too intense. So I can even start at 40 here. and it goes out like that. So this is a nice, really simple way to get into adding lights into your 3D parallaxing, and this is a really simplified explanation of it, and it looks pretty cool. If you wanna know more about animating archived images, drop a comment and let me know what you'd like to see. I'll link parts one and three in the description below. Thanks for watching and stay creative.